Now we're going to hear from the student elected to speak on behalf of the bachelor's class of 2019, Jereen Fish. Jereen has been... In Jereen has been incredibly active during her time at Michigan, to say the least. She's been a varsity athlete uh, for the maize and blue, competing in hurdles and long jumps and other things I don't understand on the track and field team. She's completed internships for Wolverine Pathways and the National Family Planning and Reproductive Health Association. Jereen was the vice president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the outreach chair for students of color uh, in public policy, and a writer for the South Campus Times. She's been a valued member of our student services team this past year, serving as a peer advisor for other undergraduate students. Next year, we have the great good fortune that she will remain on campus pursuing a Master's of Management degree at UM's Ross School of Business. I'm so pleased to welcome Doreen Fish to the podium. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Norris and Professor Lance. I could not have asked for better opening acts. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I stand here before you all, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates, honored to be delivering the BA remarks. Truth be told, I only had about a half a second to enjoy being selected to give this speech before I realized it meant I had one more final. <laughs> and between you and I, I had no idea what I was gonna say, let alone how I was going to say it. Yet slowly but surely, everything began to fall into place. I'd like to start off my speech with a story about an eighth grader who much like the BA cohort in front of you was very type A. <laughs> For she believed everything had to go a certain way and this led her to outlining her entire life. Yet I'm not convinced this was an outline more so than it was a detailed essay as not only did this outline named the college she was going to, but it also had her postgraduate plans and even the year she was going to get married. <laughs> Rumor has it the outline even named the type of engagement ring she wanted. Needless to say, she thought she had her entire life planned out. Okay, it was me. <laughs> I was a little eighth grader and now fast forward eight years, I did not like the college I thought was my dream school. I am not on the track to become the bachelorette in five years. And I do not have the mental capacity to think about marriage for at least another couple of decades. I'm sure my dad is ecstatic about that one. <laughs> for that same girl who thought she had her world figured out is standing before a crowd, basking in her uncertainty, more confident than anyone could imagine. I have only Michigan to thank for this confidence. Not only has the school shattered my hopes and dreams over and over again, <laughs> From eating sleep for dinner, stripping me of my beloved Michigan time, forcing me to show up my 8.30 instead of 8.40, or even being waitlisted to the Ford School of Public Policy. But it has also granted me the opportunities of a lifetime, from shaking the hands of both President Obama and Justice Sotomayor, to finally being admitted, admitted to the number two public policy institution in the nation. Granting me access to probably the most impressive faculty and staff in the world. <laughs> Yet, as I said, hopes and dreams were shattered. <laughs> Though it was a fun journey, and it was fun, getting here today was not easy. Every year more uncertain than the next, and this was stressful for a girl who literally thought she had her entire life figured out at 13. Last year was probably the most frightening year of them all. New school, new people, new degree requirements. And in reality, I do not think my cohort handled this change in scenery well at all, not even by a long shot. <laughs> While I did not suffer through Pub Paul 330, it was okay, I was having my own fun with Econ 401, I was there for the op-eds, I was there for Pub Paul 476, and I was there for the holiday skit. <laughs> you can actually graduate about these later, but let's just say this cohort embodies strange bedfellows, each of us as passionate as the next. Yet, amidst our disagreements, we also shared a lot of good times, from the charity auction, to two wine, not, two wine nights at Dean Barr's house, to two bar crawls, yes, we've been celebrating since last semester. This cohort has learned to come together. For just like this speech, everything has worked out. So, to the Ford community, 
Thank you all for your encompassing support to my family and friends and really my mom, my truest believer. Thank you for everything you've done for me to be here today, for I would not be here without you. To the parents, thank you all for allowing me to share this space with your, space with your children. I can tell you from personal experience, you all have done one heck of a job. <laughs> and to the cohort, thank you all for two of the best years of my life. You have allowed me to laugh in a policy school during the most polarized time in history. I have no idea what the future holds, but as Professor Cabo told me, I know things will work out because you all are some of the most brilliant thinkers I have ever encountered. And I know whatever you accomplish will be nothing short of exceptional. Just remember, uncertainty grants confidence. We did it and go blue. Thank you. Thank you, Jereen.